Hello, class. Okay, today I'm going to talk about feminism, ecofeminism, and ethics of care. By way of the paper I had you look at, Place Based Care Ethics, a Field Philosophy Pedagogy. That's by Lissy Gorolnik, Tracy Dobson, and Paul Nelson. Uh, just a couple words on some of the phrases in the title. So first, a field philosophy. Field philosophy is a technical term, and it's a development that is brought about by uh, Lissy Gorolnik. Um, she's out of um, Michigan State University, and this is about a way of learning, so in other words, it's about pedagogy that has to do with teaching philosophy that is experiential, collaborative, interdisciplinary, and then likewise, it's also addressing um, this idea that uh, we're looking at real-world problems that people are uh, situated in, and so when we're looking at that situational awareness, this is a cue to let us know that this isn't just about theoretical learning. So this is um, also taking philosophy beyond philosophy, beyond the classroom, into how it is that the theory comes into practice, okay? So um, this is that has to do with how it is that we're looking at uh, field philosophy and then likewise uh, uh, there's uh, pedagogy which basically is how it is that we're thinking of teaching okay so a teaching philosophy that's bringing about awareness and practical skills for our caring relations, right? And so specifically our caring relations with humans, non-humans, and natural systems. And the, um, the uh, other uh, term that's in the title is place-based learning. And so this place-based learning is really just an umbrella phrase for ethics, ecofeminism, environmental ethics, uh, environmental education. And that is about enabling connections that bring about empathetic relationships with the environment. And so the empathetic, uh, the word empathy there should cue you also to thinking about uh, emotion as well. So in other words, there's a lot of importance on emotion there. And so when we're thinking about um, ecofeminism, feminism, and ethics of care, we know that these are uh, tackling what are called cultural dualisms. And these cultural dualisms are uh, seen as part of the problem with the way that we are um, uh, engaged with our environment because of the traditional male understanding of ethics and the emphasis on reason, the impersonal, the impartial, the public, and the neutral. And so feminism, ecofeminism, and ethics of care are in contrast to that by way of emphasizing feeling, the personal, the partial, the private, and the relational. Okay? So the effective way there is important, the emotional part. But the, probably the most important thing we need to take into consideration there is that the uh, feminists are not cutting out those traditional views. They're, may, they're, they're more wanting to include the parts that the traditional views left out, right? So if the, if the traditional view favored um, public life, the feminist is then saying, well, what about public life? That sort of thing. So they're not cutting them out. They're just calling in, them into question to show that these are parts of our lives that are sometimes ignored, okay? So they're part of our lived experience that get ignored uh, traditionally, okay? And so the ethics of care it was founded by Carol Gilligan. She's a philosopher. She's still alive. She was born in 1936, so she's in her 80s uh, right around now. And obviously she's emphasizing care and benevolence. And if we're thinking about care and benevolence, we automatically should see those as virtues because ethics of care is an extension of virtue ethics. And that also indicates that uh, that, that also should bring about 
our, uh, we should recall uh, Aristotle, right? That in other words, Aristotle emphasized friendship. And so in that sense, he was showing us a practical relationship in terms of ethics. But remember that friendship was only focused on public life. It was not focused on private life. And so if we're not focused on private life, that means that there's a part of how it is that we're emplaced in our lives that is getting ignored, right? By traditional ethics. And so we see ethics of care as an extension of virtue ethics, right? And again, to repeat, we see uh, ethics of care as a challenge to traditional male neutrality and the overemphasis on impartiality. So that neutrality is something that the feminists and the ethics of care proponents are wanting us to uh, question and to critique. Okay? So this is not just about getting the theory right, but likewise how we are practicing um, the theory in situations, in our interpersonal relations. It's relational, okay? And also our placing emphasis on the emotional involvement, okay? So, so that's critical importance for feminists and likewise the environment, okay? Our, our attitude and behavior toward the environment. And there's also uh, Nell Noddings who prioritized um, an engrossment between caring and the cared for. And so when we hear that term engrossment, we think about absorption or immersion in our relationships. So if we're thinking about an immersion in our relationships, this is helping us see not only our um, interpersonal relationships, but our, our relationships with non-human actors, agents, and likewise uh, the environment. So, so we're not just thinking about theory, we're also thinking about how that theory comes into practice, okay? So that thinking or that focus on thinking about how theory comes into practice shows us a dynamic involvement. And this dynamic involvement is something to be uh, to pay attention to <laughs> by way of the car that's circling around <laughs> and making a lot of noise i'm hoping that's not too distracting but hell we're we're becoming situated right we're situating ourselves and so that dynamic involvement was also emphasized by the grandfather of wildlife ecology and conservation aldo leopold aldo leopold is uh, was born in 1887, uh, died in 1948, um, and he had, the, the, they, the authors of the essay include a quote of his that I just love, um, quote, we can be ethical only in relation to something we can see, feel, understand, love, and otherwise have faith in, okay, unquote. And so that is showing us that we have a rational understanding of things and likewise an emotional slash affective understanding of things. So we have cognitive knowledge and likewise emotional knowledge, okay? So, and if we have cognitive and emotional knowledge, that's going to be a better way to learn about the environment. So it's a better way to get in touch with the pedagogy and likewise how it is that we're students of the environment because we are thinking about our emotional involvement and likewise our rational involvement with the environment, right? And so all of this, all of this is to bring about changes in our behavior. So if we're bringing about changes in our behavior, that's what's going to get us to change because that's the practical side of things that need to be, that needs to be taken into consideration, right? Okay, and then so if we're thinking about that um, rational side and, and we're only focused on that, we do so at the peril of not only our emotional involvement, which traditional ethics um, uh, wants us to ignore, but also our spiritual involvement, our faith, right? So Aldo Leopold in the quote mentions faith. So there again, there's that element where faith is important in terms uh, e even in a secular way. So yes, there's that spiritual involvement, but 
maybe even a secular spiritual involvement is something that's important for, for Leopold, the um, feminists, the eco-feminists, and the proponents of ethics of care. So don't be mistaken, Aldo Leopold is not a feminist, but he is an environmentalist, and he has this way of working with the environment that is remarkably in step with the feminists. And so that's one of the reasons why there is this connection. And then lastly, what's the connection to uh, Lagerspets? Well, Lagerspets also mentions this placement in our world. So the way that we're understanding goodness in our world in terms of things that are dirty and clean also are emplaced. And that's how do we use those things? How do those things function in our lives? are important. So I'm going to close it here before I run out of time and you guys have a good day. Thank you.